Okay guys, I'm about to open my big tackle warehouse order. Now the video you watched yesterday was of me practicing the week before and you know, just figuring out what they was on. So once I figured out what they was bought and what, where they was, I went and bought this big old box of stuff that I thought I might use in the tournament. Now those bait fish I knew weren't shad but didn't really know what they were, those are emerald shiners and the shiner spawn is on. So what is a shiner? A shiner is basically the same thing as a shad except they live in a little bit colder water. Now first let's start off with the rod and the reel that I got for my dad. Now my dad's birthday's in mid-June so he's not going to be able to open it right now but I did get it early you know that way I didn't have to scramble for it once it got closer to that time. Now the reel I got him was this LFS speed spool from Lou's. This here is a 5-3 to 1 because this is going to be his cranking setup. And then the rod is this Abu Garcia Veritas and it's the winch edition. So it is set up for cranking. It's 7 foot 6 and it's a medium heavy. So yeah there's a little look at that right there. A nice little winch. This is going to be a straight up cranking setup. And the week of his birthday we're actually going to a tournament on Lake Barkley. It's got a lot of ledges on it. And deep cranking is one way that a lot of tournaments are won, so he'll definitely be breaking this sucker out in a good way the first week he gets it. And the best part about it is that he doesn't have a clue that I got this, and I got it with his credit card too. But my mom did approve it, so I'm not a completely bad kid. Okay guys, so whenever I sat down to edit this video last night, I noticed that my entire first segment was gone. The point where I opened the box, the point where I first pulled it out, and a bunch of good stuff. But unfortunately, you know, that's lost and there's nothing we can do about it. But anyways, I'm going to start y'all off right now. I'm going to be in a different t-shirt, different shorts, and it's going. this was filmed yesterday. But I'm going to set y'all in, and I'm already in the box, unboxing it, and letting y'all know about some of the lures. So, you know, here I am unboxing the box yesterday. Now, if you looked in this box, you would think that I'm obsessed with Rapala baits. And that's sort of because I am. And there's definitely a reason behind that. Now the reason I'm really digging these repellers right now is because of the hooks. As of now, the ones that they're making right now, and the reason I say right now is because like 20 years ago, you know, they wasn't using VMC. But now, they're using VMC hooks, which are super quality, and there's no need to change out the hooks. And that's really important for a boy who's in high school and can't really afford to buy hooks for every single bait he buys. So buying these repellers that already have super high quality hooks on them, that's something I really look for. So I'll walk you through the ones I got here. Here's a DT-16, and in that same color I got this DT-14, and then I got this DT-14 in a little bit different color, and then I got this DT-16 in a little bit different color. And I also got some DT-6s, and there those two are. And then I also got two jerk baits, which I had two jerk baits just like these, and I actually lost them both in two trips. And neither one of them was from actually getting hung up. One time, I just went back and casted, and I guess my line was frayed, and it snapped on the cast. And on the other one, it wasn't a tournament or anything, but my, I was on the front, my dad was on the back. I was casting towards the front, my dad was casting towards the back. We went back at the same time, they snagged, boom. Snapped my line, I only had 10 pounds, so mine snapped, he had 30 pounds. I came out with a backlash, and he came out and he just cast it because he had his thumb on it. But anyways, enough of my misfortune. This next thing I'm pull out, you're going to think I'm crazy. Probably because I am. I bought a stinking 8 inch swim bait. And I actually plan to throw this thing tomorrow. Let's get this thing out here. Oh lord, yes sir, that's a big in there. Uh, I ain't eating it today. But anyways, look at that thing. This is a live target. I was going to buy a Huddleston, but then I was like, hey, this thing's on sale. And it's like... $20 cheaper. So then I just went with this. And what my plan is, is not even to hook fish on this thing. Since tomorrow is practice, and the day after is tournament, in this lake there's not a giant amount of bass. So if I catch one bass there in practice, that could honestly hurt my tournament. Because there's not a bunch of fish that's usually caught on this lake. So what I was going to do is take this big old swim bait out, cast it around the places I plan to fish on tournament day, and just look have sunglasses on and just look behind my bait. Try to see what kind of followers, and if there's something that follows this bait all the way back to the boat, I almost know I can go back with a shaky head or maybe a really small DT6 and pick him up. But there's one thing about swim baits, bass just love to follow them, but not necessarily eat them. So I don't know if that's a good pre-fishing strategy, but you gotta learn somehow. And I'm really gonna try that tomorrow, and I'm gonna tie this on 
in about five seconds. And you know, I obviously got that Navy Tack Warehouse t-shirt. Guys, I love Tack Warehouse t-shirts. Mainly because they make me look like a better fisherman than I am. Then I got some eighth ounce shaky head spot removers. Probably will be throwing those. I got some of these eighth ounce bite me shaky heads, but I'm actually just gonna use them as swim baits. And then I got these owner mosquito hooks, one not Gonna drop shot with those and wacky rig those. And I'm looking in here. And that's all I bought. And going back to those quality hooks on the Rapalas, here is a competitor. Strike King got the most awful looking hooks I have ever saw in my life. Oh, again! I have put you on some rides in this video, haven't I? Now, I'm not going to completely bash Strike King. I have got Strike King lures with hooks like that, and those work really good for me. But And I've always got Strike King lures with those good hooks. Until I ordered these dang Series 3 or Series 5 or something, but they've got those nasty, nasty brown hooks on them. And they ain't no good neither. I can bend them together with my fingers. Hmm. Now that I remember it, there's one thing I forgot to buy. And that's a new crankbait box. This thing's full of them. And now I got six more I gotta try to fit in there. I'm going to have to leave some at home. But the thing is which ones. The first thing to stay home is probably going to be these old junky striking looking outfits. Get all those out. There's a mistake. There's a mistake. There's a mistake. Now I don't necessarily plan on throwing any 10XDs in this tournament. Like I said, there's no gizzard shads, so we're going to leave those home. And that has just gave me enough space. Okay, guys. Well, I've finally got everything rigged up and everything situated. I'll go ahead and tell you what my game plan is and what I got tied on. First thing, getting there early. Going to hit up that uh, Emerald Shiner spawn. Got that DT6 on there. Going to get on some rock banks. Throw it out there. Grind it on that rocks while the fish are still shallow. Also... I'm going to be fishing uh, this spinnerbait right here. Now the difference between I'll use this and the crankbait is if I throw the DT6 up shallow and reel it down and start getting hung a lot, I'll switch to this because the hooks are up on top. And when you're fishing a shad spawn or something like that, you do want to get your baits as close to the bank as possible because a lot of times those bass will sit out two feet from the bank and get ready and ambush shad as they're up there flicking on the bank. Also for early morning, I've got this topwater spook. I did change out the hooks on that because it did come with those nasty old brown hooks. But, you know, if they are super active up on top water or something, I'll pull this out and start throwing it around. And on my small spinning rail, I've also got this little shad wrap because I listened to a lot of cranking seminars lately and it said that if you're not getting the perfect strikes on your crankbait, and they're not get it choking it, then instead of changing colors, you can change actually actions. And this shad wrap has a whole lot subtler, tighter action than that other one. And this one may just catch more fish than that other one. But then again, I don't know, and I'm just going to have to fish to see which one they like better. And if those bass are straight up not cooperating whatsoever, I do have this little spot remover shaky head. I'm not sure what color I put on it. Probably they're going to put some variation of watermelon or black. Because black always works, especially during bait spawns, for some odd reason. And then I do got one more rod, but I don't know if you can count this. I got a stinking 8-inch trout swim bait. If you see me throwing this during the tournament, you can pretty well guess that something is either bad wrong in my head, or I got like a 25-pound bag and I'm going for some giants. So what I'm basically saying is I probably won't be throwing this tournament day. So yeah, guys, come back tomorrow for the official first day of pre-fishing and the only day of pre-fishing hopefully i won't catch a fish i know that sounds really odd but hopefully i don't catch any but locate a bunch but anyway see you later i'll sign you off on this thinking 16 inch 16 inch swim bait right here ready